Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today we are joined by the legendary Mike Mangini. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Bart. Happy to be here. Yes. So I don't think you need any in- introduction, really, but I think just to give people a little bit of a primer, um, just I have a list that's in no particular order. Berkeley professor for a while. Uh, you were in Dream Theater. You played with Steve Vai, Annihilator, Extreme, um, Educator. You have DVDs. You have books. Uh, world's Fastest Drummer, five record holder uh, from 02 to 05. I think that's probably <laughs> up to date, not to make you blush or anything, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are a monster drummer, and but I, I just love that um, we're going to talk about some gear and some some building of the drum set. But you're also very involved in the brain and um, mm. how you know neurofeedback and neuroscience and how it all relates to um, rhythm and drumming. So um, anyway, Mike, real quick, let me explain that people are used to having these unbelievably detailed, long gear deep dive episodes that are three episodes deep. Uh, and I think for the sake of your time, I want to maybe look at one of your earlier kits, which is very interesting, and then some of your newer kits. But I want to hear more instead of the, you know, how long is that tension rod, more about how you design these sets. Um, okay. And and I think um, I'll, I'll throw it over to you here first. So uh, up on the screen right now, we're looking at a video right now of you playing with Extreme in 1995. Um how did this cu- this kit come to be with the Roto Toms? Because I love Roto Toms personally. There are a few uh, factors in the design and uh, birth of this drum kit. Yeah. So the first one is musical. Everything's musical for me. No matter what view is taken or assumed, it is a musical source from the beginning. So when we look at this, you need to know a few other factors. I was trained uh, and very active in my town's public school system. And I was fortunate enough to have who I think might be the single greatest drum teacher that ever walked on the planet. And, and I can back that claim by saying, to see if people agree with this or not, but that the man explained why he was suggesting that I do certain things, and he showed me how things worked. So my will was changed. I became involved. It wasn't, I said so, so do this, and do this because I said so, and I'm the teacher. It was the opposite of that. It was unbelievable respect from him for all of us. I was 10, 10, and he respected me. He's like, so who are you? What are you? Okay, this is how your hand works. This is how the arm works. He would show me anatomy books. So that's what what we're part of how I became this thing I, I am right now. But anyway, <laughs> because of because of the school system, I was an orchestrally trained drummer, um, and I played in the marching band in high school. So if you look at my drum set, you're going to see the, 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 the tri-toms that we had. Other people have four drums that they walk around with, or quints, you know, five drums in the marching band. So that particular kit you're looking at is an apex shape, starting with a six-inch to- a rototom in the dead middle, and then to the left is an eight, to the right is ten. So it's mm. an apex. It's the highest pitch is in the center. The next pitch, a little bit lower, is to the left, but the next pitch lower is to the right. And then the next pitch lower is that's lower is to the left. And then the next one to the right, and then the next one to the left, and the next one to the right. So you have seven drums from the middle going six. And then on the left side, you get the the eight, the twelve. Uh yeah. Can I even remember what I had? And and then the sixteen <laughs> on the right, on the right you have the, the well the sixes in the middle, but then you have the the ten inch. Um, uh, then the 14 and then the 18. So yeah. it's an apex shape. It comes from one day I was in marching band and I thought, why can't I set my drums up like this? Because then I can follow the melody in the music, the melody in the music. So by the time I joined Extreme, cable high hats were invented. And I thought, this is it. I mean, I saw the clouds open up. My pupils dilated. Things in my <laughs> body Things in my body started to do things I didn't understand. I'm like, this is who I'm supposed to be. I think this is yeah. this is it right here. So you could tell you know, I was. I, I'm still now. I'm smiling. The excitement was there. This is a musical decision, but I needed 
the artillery behind it. I needed the gear to exist. You know, you people can talk about art all they want, but I'm t- sorry, but the art does not exist without the the way to manifest it. If you don't have sure. a way to manifest it, it's useless. It's in your head. You might yeah. as well be, you know, a, a closet dweller, been the greatest musician ever in your own closet. It doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't care what art you have. You need a way to express it, which is why, gosh, the music programs are so important and support is so important, for, uh, you know, resources. But off that subject, this particular Rototom kit is an apex shape designed for the music and design so I could follow some of Nuno Betancourt's riffs exactly as he played them. Soloists don't play two notes per, I mean, two hits per note, excuse me, like like a drummer would go around a drum set. That's not how yeah, the other yeah. instruments are that you know they play sure. riffs and so i wanted to follow them what made you choose roto toms you're not going for gimmicks you chose this what what made you oh, choose this kit well initially while the roto toms were around when i was uh you know like back in the days of methuselah a long time ago they were around and um I, I had them because they, they were affordable and because I was short and could place them in places I could reach them. That was it. <laughs> that was that was the initial. But then it came to my attention that I could shove um, a microphone right up underneath them and get a very isolated sound from the bottom and a very open drum tone. Um, yeah, and then as you can see in that picture, my cymbals are all whacked out to the right and left. So those higher, you know, T- t- rototoms didn't have any symbols near them so there wasn't symbol leakage did it factor into your decision at all and we'll we'll keep moving here with like bass drums and different your mixes of symbols but it did it factor in that this looks awesome from the from the audience to see this setup and it's very unique yes uh you can see the drummer and the nice and low and that's why i have the chrome bass drums i won a drum contest so i won uh all that stuff, even though I was using Rototoms anyway. And I was like, well, this is the perfect drum company. It was a, I went up with Remo. They, they make the heads I use and they make the drums I use. Gee, this is kind of cool. So it is, mm. it is a, it's an optics thing as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good explanation though. So those are Remo bass drums. So this is really a full yeah. Remo dr- drum set. Okay, cool. Yeah. What, yeah. What's your thoughts on the Remo shells? I did an interview and they, and with Remo years ago and they were kind of like, yeah, the shells, they were fine. And then they kind of moved on. Did you like them? I didn't get much details from Remo themselves about them. Well, because what they're made of, it doesn't seem like it's uh, a desirable thing. Like it's made from the made from the the, the cardboard uh, rolls, you know, like the yeah. like to- like toilet paper rolls, but giant thick cover. And I think they used resin and everything. But I I will tell you, when I got the drums and tried them, what I liked about them was that there weren't overtones. It was like a real nice sound for recording, like doom. And that was it. You didn't yeah. have to put tape on them or anything. So, I mean, look, at every, everything has its pluses and minuses and anything. Yeah. And yeah. So. so, all right, Mike. So jumping to a newer setup here, I believe this was, if this was, uh, what what year would you put this set at uh, in your in your history? Was that 2010, 2011, 12 kind of era? This was, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when I um, when I uh, see I joined Dream Theater for the 2011 uh, a dramatic tour of events touring cycle, I used the silver silver kits, which was uh, this one and um, uh, one painted by Nub, who works for American Choppers. It just it was silver, like the, but just had a design on it, like gray, gray. So anyway. Yeah, that, that's a lot of stuff there. It is a lot of stuff. So again, for people who were just listening, I mean, now we're getting into the like, the, the earlier Rototom kit was very cool, Apex, but it was like kind of like, you know, uh, it was not basic by any means. But for you, it compared to this, it was more of a basic setup. So now we're getting into things hanging above you. Um, I know Terry Bozio was an early influence on you. Um, mm-hmm. So he's he, like, just kind of describe what we've got here we've got things hanging above we've got chimes we've got you're surrounded 
How did this come to life? Well, that because again, I was trained orchestrally. So all of these things have a place in the music. I mean, if, if, and I like heavy music. I like, I like, I, I like classic rock that's heavy. You know, I like um, metal that's not newer stuff, but that's more, uh, you know, 70s, 80s era kind of a thing. But anyway, the point is, and there's a low note hit. Um, it's not a place where you hit a little six inch drum that sounds like a chihuahua barking. Okay. And yeah. so, and so when guitarists I played with would go, you know, fly high up in the neck or pianist fly high up in the upper registers. Well, giant drums that ring a lot weren't appropriate to cop their notes, meaning match their notes and mimic it, especially if it was fast. Cause the big drums have big drum heads and ring a long time. It's just a big rumble and a big mess. So I have an yeah. orchestra of drums and a range and sound. Up above are the, uh, the Pearl's cannon toms, uh, referred to as oc octobons, uh, the way Tama makes. Um, but I, and I call them the hamster tubes or the tube drums because it was fun and, and, and humorous to me. So those are, you know, the, those are not all the highest pitch, though. The, actually, the I think the second one uh, is a lower is lower than my middle tom tom, like the twelve inch drum. So it's not like they're all higher pitched. They're just a particular group of drums that have a sound. And uh, yeah, there's a high pitch there. But my six inch drum is actually the highest pitched in the kit. So I had the range, the, the toms range from six to twenty, which gave me that orchestral thing. And so I just tried to put the cymbals, the crash cymbals, the big thick metal things, up up and away which is what I did. And then there was percussion in the music and wind chimes and stuff, you know, sound blocks and whatever the heck. So, you know, I, I had to push those aside and, and there you go. And, um, yeah, but, the, but the multi bass drums, that's something that, that I developed when I was teaching at, uh, at Berkeley. Um, I, I, I wrote music and I just heard bass drums that when they were played fast, were tighter sounding and that when they were played very slowly and tried to move air, that tight little sound didn't float my boat. So I wanted a big bass drum that went boom, that I wasn't going to play a lot of notes on. So that's why the 26 is there and it's set up on a slave pedal. So, you know, I could blast it off to the side. And then I had an 18 inch drum because I would play ghost notes with it while my left foot played lead notes either on the 22 or the 26 because I trained wow. myself to do so. It didn't matter whether I played right or lefty because I trained my body uh, to accept whatever my brain, yeah, whatever my sure. brain, it's, it's like MIDI. It's like my brain and my body were like I had MIDI chords attached. Yeah, right? I assigned a sound and just move had it. a thought, <laughs> boom, just moved yeah. it. So yeah. that's what it is. It's, it's different pitches in the bass drums for tonality. It's a bunch of toms to match the you know the uh the note area an octave sure. that was being played and then the symbols were there because it was the same thing i have stacks where i would reflect certain tones in pitch but not exact pitch that's the difference like you mentioned terry his drums are pitched they have actual notes mine are not mine are in ranges mm -hmm. and i play differently uh than than he does when he's on that kid he's literally playing the exact correct notes like it's a glockenspiel but i was trained as an again an orchestral guy so i know mallets i can play the glockenspiel i play marimba i play the xylophone and that's why i was able to write in my everything for a solo record that i released you know four months ago five months ago which is great ago, whatever which is was. amazing yes oh, invisible signs thanks. yes love yeah it. thank well, you so yeah. yeah so that training that that's and this is this we're talking about this kit what I'm spending a bit of time on it because it has more stuff than the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real thing I, I, that keeps coming to my mind with all of these, with your huge drum sets and just drum sets in general from like a mega drummer is how do you go about designing this setup? I know the reason why, but is this a pen to paper kind of like, I want it to look like this. I imagine you work closely with Pearl to do this. But like when you're ready to switch over into a new set for a new tour cycle or whatever, switch into a new band, how does that happen? How do you get from your brain to this huge drum set? I write things down because I believe uh, Plato was onto something, saying that 
that everything comes from shape and form. And I've done a lot of, I know you've studied some of my background, but I am more into physics really than, than anything at post cognitive science studies. You know, how does, how does everything work? What, what is this? How does it go? So without getting into that too much, I write things down because it comes from ideas and images, and then I have to work with it. So it means that I throw away a lot of pieces of paper with a lot of scribbly notes on it, and I don't care how many pieces of paper I have to make mistakes <laughs> on and crumple up and throw away. I just keep at it and keep at it because I must have that completion from yeah. this thing I'm not even quite sure about. It was like, I know I got to be something on the drums. I know... I know I, uh, something's calling me. It's like a, it's is like it's not electromagnetism. It's not a real magnet, but it is. It works like a magnet. So calling yeah. is pulling you, and it's made of information. It's actually made of information, which you can't even you can't even find it. Where is information in the universe? This is crazy fun stuff to talk about, but it's pulling me. And the thing is, yeah. I don't know enough. I don't know. And I and I don't want any presuppositions. I guess is the word. Uh, I, I don't want to presuppose to think that I know when I don't know things, you know, this stuff I think is, okay, I think I got this one, but still I always keep a little bit open going, well, I might not have it right. Uh, yeah. You know, there might be a little something, you know, it's, it's interesting. Sure. But so how, do you take that to so, per, how do you take that to pro? Write it down. <laughs> well, <laughs> and then you hand it, it off. <laughs> well, I, I write it down, write it down. And then I try things. And then I, sure. you know, I, I have existing equipment. Usually I yep. usually have existing equipment. And then like a lot of musicians and drummers do, you sit there and it's like you're playing with Legos and you realize you can't position things a certain way, which yields necessity breeds invention, right? So mm -hmm. I've invented a lot of things for my drum, for my endorsement companies. I've come up with things because of necessity. Like, do you have a clamp that does this? Do you have a, gee, like uh, you'll notice, well, you could notice now if you look back that a lot of Pearl drummers, their racks would be connected by a small piece. That was yeah. that was my deal. That's oh, that, wow. I did that. That's our, called an RJ fifty, nice. and you know it's not like if the fifty people that use it are going to give me any credit or mention my name, and I don't need it, frankly. But the thing is, um, it would be nice that people know that, and the the, 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 the cable hi hat development and a lot of things, a lot of things came about from my necessity because I did things so differently that it gave Pearl ideas, and it's the same thing with Zildjian. And these trash former that came from, I couldn't stack symbols without them creating a vacuum. And with the, the more cracked a symbol was, especially an oriental type, the more cracked it was, the more the symbols wouldn't create a vacuum. So I was like, I one circumstance led to another and I had a bent symbol and the rest is history. It became the trash former. So it was like out of necessity for my desire to fulfill these musical things that I couldn't quite figure out because I think if I could have figured it out intellectually, that means I would have already known, and I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. I was doing all this by trial and error and pen and paper and <laughs> throwing yeah, it away. Throwing it away, starting over. Well, it lets it lets the next generation then know that, all right, this has been done, and then they're going to push it forward even more. And that's how our instrument goes from the early jazz days yeah. of you know, you know, know, playing traps to something as huge as this drum set where uh, yeah. it's, it's just pushing it forward. And then the way your brain works and the music and... Um, it's just, it's just incredible to see the evolution of our instrument. So the way we're kind of doing this is early, let's say middle. And then now why don't we hop over to what you're playing now and look at your current kit, which is a beauty. Uh -huh. And we have, uh, behind you. So this behind one, now me. we can switch to the real deal in the room, uh, setup. So what do we have here? So, so this, this is not the full kit with all of the bass drums and all of the toms it's missing the six and eight inch toms, which I've been thinking about putting back, <laughs> but in a different spot than they ever were because of my Mixwave product. You see, I, I, I designed the Mixwave virtual kit uh, of mine uh, in the Roman temple. And because of the necessity of like, well, how am I going to fit all the toms? Well, this that's just a virtual instrument that people can have all of this, right? With my sounds. Yeah. But the reality of this kit I would put the six and the eight up near the near, near, near the center one. So it just has the 22-inch kicks. Um, it's missing a couple of times, but I do have 
extra KT10 roll and pedal. So if I do need to use other kick sounds, I can I always put it in the roll and TM2, and it's my sound. I can I can. It's you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can sample it. Oh no, <laughs> the know, S word. I'm a fan of getting some help with my drum sound by layering a bit, but it's got to be from my microphone and my sound. And it's just like, it's just like an additional microphone without the bleed. Yeah, of course. And so like I'll record it separately and then just kind of, you know, a little punch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Layer it in, but it's not like, you know, so-and-so's database of kick drum sounds and it's like matching mine and basically almost replacing it. Yeah. Yeah. Not, 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 not quite that, because my, my playing is so even that dynamics make it sound like a drum machine. So I have to like, I, I got to watch that. Yeah, um, sure. But it's, so tell, anyway, yeah. what's the finish we have on this set here? It's beautiful. That That's like um, BMW blue. It's car paint. Oh, uh, wow. per, Pearl, Pearl spared no expense for my drum kits with, with expensive car paint. So um, that's what that is. And it's uh, from, uh, uh, they get it from House of Colors. So, uh, but, but that was the inspiration was, was that, was that, that blue. Yeah. And that, that's what it is. Um, the, the rims are brushed chrome, which that comes in handy during video shoots and stuff because early in my early days uh, and the, when video shoots started to happen, my drums would get sprayed. The chrome would get sprayed with stuff. So you've got this monster drum set, but you're actually kind of switching things up now, and you are doing a series of master classes uh, coming up. We're recording this January 16th, just so people know kind of the the time frame of this. But right now, you're starting these off. So tell us about it. What's going on with the master classes? Well, the master classes are a I describe them as a a premium. A uh, high-powered educational event because in that setting. Now you got to remember, I taught group classes at Berkeley for ten years, and I was a counselor. You know, with uh, the uh, cognitive <laughs> science and that 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 stuff comes into play. So, I really studied how people, yeah, how people operate. And in this setting, the confidence that people in that in classes with that setting get is it's unbelievable because they're seeing their own issues being solved with other people like not just them or not just one person but with everybody so they realize that this solution actually works and they always have questions that another person in the class is asking and when everyone gets to see everyone else's solutions being solved the it's powerful it's really powerful especially when so many don't think that they can do something and I'm standing up there going, yes, you can. It's just a little blockage in your perception of it. So let's, let's clear that out, sure. clean the slate and start and start, you know, with the fundamentals, which is why beginners can yeah. go. Oh, so that's an interesting, that's, that's very good to bring up because sometimes you look at these, mm-hmm. you know, masterclass and a beginner, you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think I can handle that. So I'm glad you said that because- Maybe mm-hmm. it's good for people to start off on the right mm-hmm. foot. Of course it is. And get a good understanding of, of what to do. Yes. Yeah, because then you don't form bad habits. Bad habits are really hard to rewrite. You, you, you can't, you know, the, the human person doesn't work like a computer. You can't just drag yeah. a memory to trash. I mean, we've all been, I'm sure everyone alive has been traumatized in some way. You'd like to drag some of sure. that to trash, but you can't do it. So you, but you can't, there are ways of kind of circumventing that thought from going in the wrong direction and you can kind of make stronger memories. Anyway, without getting too deep into it, I've spent a lot of time with it and I apply that stuff in the class. People are happy and that's what they are. They're master classes because I essentially, um, people are going to save years off of their lives. And again, if they're not populated by too many people because then you know you're not going to charge that much money if you're going to charge money people have to get their money's yeah. worth what are they paying for they're paying to save a decade of time but it helps to have other people in there but not you know 50 people sure. yeah it's too many well i know so. um i'll put a link in the description people can see the uh schedule i know you're coming to cincinnati where i am soon going way back so what was your jobs early on before drumming it sounds like you're doing some some cool stuff there Oh yeah, I was a dishwasher. Let me <laughs> so tell was you, I. smelling brack, smelling the worst thing it was smelling the, the 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 cream of broccoli soup in a pan stuck there. I I had to stop myself <laughs> from heaving 
for like 49 straight minutes. So that's, that was <laughs> yeah. glamorous and I learned quite a lot. Oh, well, but it's, it's a oh, noble no, job. It's too. very yeah. good. Um, but, but I mean, but for me, you know, but for me, you know, I, whatever, I'm just, yeah, getting right, into I the brain because you, really and, you are me, on but, your um, website, you have a whole category and there's, yes. Well, the, the reason this came about is because, um, with the scholarships offers that I was getting in the, in the mail for every music college there was, uh, it was looking, it was, a, it was pretty, I'm a pretty fortunate person, but my father said, no, you're not going to school for music. And why dad, because you can already do it. You already won every contest mm. in the United States. Why would I, why, why would you go to school for something you can already do? So, I mean, I, I yeah, understood I what he meant and he's correct on that level. But you know, as musicians know, it's more than the networking that gets you the job. It's not about being the best <laughs> dish spinner because you can spin it faster than yeah. someone else or whatever. Right? It's really not fully about that. I mean, the skill is important, but you, you got to yeah. network, right? So anyway, but I, but I listened and I went to school for accounting and software engineering. And when I was in school for software engineering, I was also um, in the the higher level math classes because I was going to major in mathematics. That was his compromise. He's like, go major in mathematics in this school and then mm -hmm. minor in music. And sure. I was like, okay. So anyway, the, the point is it was important though. It was important because what I saw in those math equations and what I saw with the programming became simple, not complicated, simple. It became binary. It became ons and offs. And then I looked and I thought, I can program my body. To, to, I, and I can assign things to it. It's just like before I even knew MIDI, yeah. this this training and this thought that came into my head, I was like, I know I can do this. Like I got to figure it out. That became rhythm knowledge, which is why rhythm knowledge is so different. It Because it's bare bones, ons and offs. It sounds complex. And, you know, if you just read it, even the stuff I can talk about and some of the things I know, it sounds like... It's all like, deeply intellectual, and I'm like wicked smart, and you know whatever. It's like, no, look, come on, stop. I'm just, I'm motivated. I, I, I learned things that made sense to me, and that were calling me and pulling me. And that I had some, some, some. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sure. I got it. Yeah. What, what do you say? What, what is it? I got it. And then I didn't, but I didn't get everything, and mo in fact, most of it. But I got what I needed to do this, and so. That's what it was. It was the binary. It was it was the machine level language programming that really changed me. And then I I dropped out of that college because a professor pulled me aside after school and said, "You need to leave the school. You can't be here. Why are you here?" And the reason he said it to me is because I joined the jazz band and it was a business school. And I was I, I just tore it up like crazy. Uh, I auditioned and did a drum solo. They didn't know what to make of it because I had, you know, I was, yeah, sure. I had a lot of chops and stuff, right? But and I and I could and I could sight read it, and I made, um, I won the highest position jazz and high schooler could win in the country. So I, you know, I was, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was, I could do it, right? I wasn't not the greatest and all that, but, but I was good enough and it, enough to freak them out. And they're like, "You shouldn't be here, buddy." And I was like, "Why?" you know, find me a job. <laughs> yeah, like, <then>. Come on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but then I sure. went into the music thing and, you know, and then I w left the music thing for the software thing. And then I left the software thing for the music thing. And then I left the music thing for the teaching and counseling thing. And then I left the teaching and counseling <laughs> thing back for the music thing. And now here I am again, doing, doing yeah, really. Both. <laughs> but, and then, I mean, you do though, from, it seems like you're applying your, interest in this in in knowing and kind of understanding you know the brain on a it's just a part of who you are and i think that's becoming more and more common and and understood with our instrument that like you know listening to how you feel and 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 what's going on with with your body and your you know the neurofeedback is becoming more and more accepted and i'm saying from personally like people are listening more to those episodes that we've done on it and i take that as a sign of like yeah. oh maybe this isn't so mm. Um, whatever you know, woo woo as it used to be. <laughs> yeah, well, well, but but here's the thing with me, and, and, and I want to make this clear that I need to fulfill 
a puzzle. Like I have to complete a puzzle, if that makes any sense. And the thing is, I don't always know what the final picture of the puzzle is. I just want to gather pieces and I have some idea of it. I don't know that much. That's why I have to study so much. So I need to fulfill everything. Like my, my DVD, The Grid, everything that has ever been played on an instrument, everything that can be played and anything that could ever be played in the future is essentially on one page that I made is categorically speaking, not with all of the elements. As I made this thing, I set this thing up like the periodic table of elements in chemistry, like everything's there. But the point is I had to complete, I had to physically learn all the time signatures, all the subdivisions, every major style there was. And I'm not talking just learn a few songs. I'm talking like yeah. really study it for years. I had to learn all the different dynamic levels. I had to learn all the different phrasings and fi- uh, figures. I had to learn the notes. I had to learn every- uh, enough, about, enough about everything to fulfill this puzzle and fill it in. And then I did the same thing as far as um, um, the education thing is concerned because I didn't go that all, I didn't go all in on cognitive science. I went in enough to help me know, aha, this is why I can do this and that person can't. And this is why that person could do something and I can't yeah. do it. So the, so the whole thing was seeing what, you know, I got to comp- complete this i gotta make this puzzle of me too and i mean it's all of these things like oh no and i don't even know what all of them are i gotta figure it out so with cognitive science i took it to a point it's more about a a grid out what a human person might be and that's deep because there's oh my my bookcases are full of philosophy books and and just all kinds of uh different sciences and opinions and stuff you know and it's like okay it looks like intellectual stuff and it just might be that on some level, but I'm not, you know, I'm not that <laughs> wicked smart. I just kind of know, I know how to figure things out. Like I, I yeah. find solutions to yes. intangible things. I, I, I can't fix, I can't fix the, the, the second door in any of the doors in my house. I go like, the, I'll, I'll bend the screws. <laughs> I'll bend the hinges. I'll, 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 I'll say, I'll call the door names yes, as if it's the door's yes. fault. I'm like, I won't say any words, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not good no, at but, it. Okay. So I'm not, you know, what I'm, but I'm, yeah, I know this other like stuff. like what you're doing. And I think a lot of us can do is, is look at something that's a pretty heady kind of like deep people have their entire career. They have masters in it. And you're taking the things that you need and you want and applying it to what applies best for you. Cause I was explaining it to you before, and I've told people on the show before, I've filmed psychology seminars for continuing education courses for years. And it's, you go, you sit, I film, because psychologists have to take classes to keep their license, and I'm the guy in the back filming them. There are some pretty dry and boring subjects, I will tell you, after doing it for six years, (laughs) you know, but it pays the bills. But there's some that pop up where I go, oh my God, that's fascinating, or wow, I'm going to apply that to my life. So it sounds like you're very good at, I like that. I like that. I want to apply that. And yeah. Yeah. And it made, it made me unafraid to, you know, buy a book this thick, r- read or skim through it and not worry yeah, that I yeah, didn't understand sure. it all. I didn't worry about, I wanted to understand what the book was trying to say. Like, like almost like the table of contents became interesting to me. Sure. It was like, what is, wh- I want the picture. I want the roadmap because you know, I know I'm going to go down some street and the street is unsafe. So it's not about just having the map because then you can go on a street and other locals can tell you, don't go down that street. It's unsafe. So, you know, because you don't, you need, you need the, you need the macro, you need the micro, and then you need the connection between the two. It's like, it's like not to go off on it because we could talk about drum sets, right? But it's like, it's kind of like how, it's kind of like how light works with the photon. The light is only what the observer is observing. And it changes sure. with the observer. That's that's quantum physics. That is bizarre. So, you know, if you freeze, you see just the, the photon. It's You don't see the light wave because the photon's not moving. Hello. But if you see it in a different context, you see the light wave because you're, you're viewing a different thing. But it's like it's like you're going from the micro to the macro. The mic- it's like this wave that I'm existing. And it's how I always saw how I saw life was I need to get both ends of the spectrum and yeah. then fill it in. Yeah. And that's 
that's that's that's the crux of the simplicity of my first rhythm knowledge book. It yeah. says here's a person on a in an environment. What are the components of the environment? All right, what are the connections between me and the environment? And I used to um, um, assess you know environments that way and and how I would exist in those environments. But we're going back to the drum kit. Going back to the drum well, kit, I was going to say, how do you thing. apply it's that like, to okay. the drum set and to drumming in the simplest without, you know, because that, that all that stuff goes down a path of like, it gets confusing and people get turned off pretty quickly and go, ah, whatever. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, you know I find it fascinating. But but really, though, I mean, it's <laughs> how do you apply that to, the to you know, your average Joe playing a drum set and how he can get a little bit better today? Because all of it, all of it has to do that with the person sitting down and all of the possibilities that exist outside of them, meaning for the equipment and stuff. So what you do is you apply it by saying, well, what's fixed? What's something that's fixed? Okay, so it's fixed that I'm a human being. I got to sit on a stool, so I got to sit a certain way. There's something called the bass drum pedal. Okay, I'm not going to kick the drum with my bare foot or anything. So these things are, these are givens. It's called in math. You're going to, you know, a problem. It's like, well, here are the givens. X is eight and Y is 44. You know, and then you, you, fill in, you fill it in, but there are givens. So there's givens. So with the pedal, it's all fixed and the drums are set up a certain way. And the hardware for each company is limited to the hardware for each company. So it does certain things and doesn't do other things. So that's how you apply it is you get a, you get a perspective and a picture and you go, okay, what are my options? What are my options? And then you start with something that's that you understand and you can reach and hit and go, okay, this makes sense to me for the music that I like. And so all these other things come into play because you start thinking about shapes, shapes, like to memorize music, the shape and form, there's always form to music and there's a shape to it. There's, there's a shape to this, a lot of triangles on my kit. I remember a lot of things and get creative with creative with my expressions because of some shapes. It's like, well, I'll make a rhombus or some funny word or whatever, <laughs> yeah. the shape of trapezoid, you know, wee, yeah. look like looks like that. Or a bunch of triangles or lines and things. And then you can start to then, then you get the idea like, whoa, why don't I make a line and put two snare drums up like symbols just hmm. to see what happens if if someone has the resources to do so. So the shape and form start to come into play. Um, the cognitive science comes into play by way of what do I like? What comes natural? What don't I know? What don't I know? What, what can I learn? Gee, maybe I could set something up to help me learn that. And I could transition to that first apex drum kit with extreme that we started out. A lot of that um, was designed, of course, for musical purposes, but I couldn't play it when i first set it up so it was made it was like it was a tool yeah. it was a learning tool like if i could learn to play this if i can really flip my feet around and really truly play completely lefty gosh i'll be able to play four million six hundred thousand and seventy one <laughs> sure. more things yeah no i'm I just know. saying yeah. because but there's you know, like there's like mathematical but, there's equations and there's things that are out there in the world that have been there for a thousand years but taking that and going hey Maybe if I set it up like, you know, that dead guy's theorem or whatever to like light it up, uh, that'll be, that'll make me play a little bit better. Oh, wait, it did. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, yeah. And, and even the, and even the angles of drums, because let's just say, and let me give you an example of something that freaks people out and it shouldn't. It's calculus. Calculus is like movie frames. It's moving pictures is what calculus is. That's all it is, is motion that you can slice up so you can predict it. That's how rockets can land on a, you know, a small area in the moon. You predict, you make predictions. You can take space and like slice it up yeah. and then calculate stuff and it works. But the thing is, there's, equation, there's equations that have things called limits. So forget what it means technically. Forget it. What I did as a drummer is, is I thought, what's my what's my limit? Like I took the word literally. So I didn't sit there and apply a differential equation to my Tom Toms. I mean, come on. Um, but what I did is I said, oh, a limit. Mm, oh, that sounds interesting. Like what's my physical limit? And so I was like, oh, well, the angle of the drums, I I can't, like, I'm uncomfortable. So, gee, why don't I study the human body and some biology or something? Just an anatomy book. I'm not talking about getting deep. I'm just talking about open your eyes. Like, what am I? I'm a person. How do I work? And I'll tell you, one of the greatest blockages to learning 
is 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 that is the presupposition that you already have the full truth. Sure, you already yeah. know it, and it's like okay, I'm not talking about devaluing absolute truths. Okay, yeah. and there are because if there weren't, then you could say, well, there are no absolute truths, and then I could say, <laughs> is that an absolute truth? And then you go to circle, and that's and that's but the, yeah, well, that's the end of that. Yep, that's 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 the end of that argument. There are absolute truths. So I'm not trying to demean them. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, I've learned I have had to learn the hard way that no matter what I'm studying or getting, I still have a little bit of me that's like, okay, show me what I'm missing. And I'm always open to say, show it to me then. I want to see what I'm missing. Explain it. Cause if I don't have it, yeah, fair enough. So I I have that, I have that that quality where I'm stepping back going, but when we, you know, think we have the whole thing, it gets in the way because it's like, well, drums shouldn't be set up like that. That's somebody that's in an unfortunate place and their belief yeah. is in the way. And I'm not, I'm not demeaning belief no, because I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah. you know, I don't want to do that, but I was because I don't believe that <laughs> belief, my belief yeah. and belief. Or whatever. No, 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 no. It's like, and it ch- things change for people. We have, we evolve, we learn, we saw yeah. we something else. And I sit there and I go, I thought I knew about this thing. I, mean, I don't even know what this word means. Like, yeah. oh gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you, they say the older you get, well, but your body changes <laughs> and things. And I mean, we all like, just, just as you yeah, said, yeah, you yeah, all, yeah. we all kind of know things that we know we should be doing, but we're not doing, but if we worked harder at it, we'd be better. But uh, it sounds like sometimes oh, yeah. we need to listen to more of our invisible signs, which is a, tra- a transition to talking yeah. about your album, which is incredible. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. It, man. You know, and I, you. I listened to the whole thing a few times and I like all the songs earlier. I was listening to seek and find. I love that song. I think the whole thing is just awesome, but, um, tell us about it. Tell yeah, me- that thing's yes, powerful, yes. isn't it? I mean, see, can find it's just it's the simplest beat in the whole world, but that's such there's yeah. such openness in those chords. Did you record it all at your house, or where, where did you? Everyone recorded all of their parts in their sure. own personal studios. The tracks were sent to me. I then did stuff to the tracks, and then I passed it on to Jay, Jimmy T, uh, who I worked with a lot uh, for about four or five years with Dream Theater. Like when I say work with a lot, I don't mean like even in the Dream Theater realm, which we did. I'm talking about conversations, you know, in uh, staying in the same hotel. I'm like, let's, let's, let's meet down at the bar and have a beer. I want to talk to you. You know, we we would talk before sound checks and uh, he helped me a lot with engineering and I got help from Rich Chicky, uh, who was just, 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 just he's just just he's he's just <laughs> I get it. right so um uh these 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 wonderful people helped me uh because i don't, didn't know enough you know and even when i thought okay I'll, i'm gonna do this and I, I did everything every instrument i wrote everything virtual instruments by the way as i had played guitar and bass i just no 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 <laughs> put it down the virtual stuff's a lot easier to yes. get my point across um so so you know once i did all that and i had to sit back and and say I felt like Ch- Chevy Chase in uh, Christmas Vacation. Yeah, just kind of nodding. You know, he's like con- yeah. contemplating. Going, hmm. Anyway, um, he's like, okay, I'm turning. I'm going to give autonomy. Uh, I'm going to let Jimmy T do, do his thing to, to, to these tracks. And, you know, after I did my thing, and then we would go back and forth. So point being that that album, um, which ended up, I – you know, players had things to say. I listened. Yeah, of you course. know. Um, did you mean this F? I'm like, is it a wrong note? Yeah, Mike, it's a wrong one. Yeah, well, yeah. let's change. Uh, no, it. I didn't. Like, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I, I don't have any. It was, it, it, no, but it, but, but it was interesting because I've been more protective of my drumming when it's with well anyone else gets control of it or something. Uh, but with this album and writing, I. I not only had zero ego with it, I was like really humbled by the process. Like, ah, uh, this is the best I can do. Like, what do you have any ideas? What do you, what do you know? It's like, okay, I know what I want, but I don't know it all here. So I, I got opinions all about it, but songs before I chose them. I got, I let people review it. I, 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 you know, I involved other people and I listened to them. So that's really what makes it powerful is that this solo project of mine, which I did 
everything on. I feel like Doc, Dr. Dr. <laughs> yes. Evil with the, with Air the quotes, quotes, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's it, 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 what what made it best was saying, "Oh no, 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 no." I have my direction, and it's a it's it's a it's a piece of me. But I'm going to let people that do things better than I do have their say and go and sure. do those things. So um, I recorded it uh, in this studio here. And it, it was a different shell. It was the nub kit, um, the reference pure that I recorded, but re- recorded on. But it was set up the same as this, which I used on distance over time with Dream Theater and that tour. So the six and the eight inch toms are not there, and uh, o- only only two bass drums are there, the the twenty twos. And I find that if anyone's into gear, and you are, you know, yeah, yeah. talking about gear here, that recording with two bass drums. Um, is easier in the in the edit mix stage in case of errors or whatever uh, because I look at I, I'm the guy that records things and recorded everything in oh, one wow. pass for most yeah. of my career one take oh I did because I well, I would learn it because then I th- the benefit was that you can weed out the BS and you can find better things to play and when you're playing it for real and it's one pass. You realize that it's the experience is different. You're like you change the things that you might not have done or might or might not know about because you have to play it sure. in one shot. So if that that's the case, and one of my limbs whacks a drum uh, before a downbeat in an ugly way, <laughs> I, let somebody fix <laughs> yeah. it. Like fix yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you know, like so what? I'm not gonna play the whole thing. The feel is great, but. Um, and all of that. But anyway, with that being another subject, that's this. And the solo album was recorded on everything here except sure. just the drum shells were swapped out with the oh, same cool. symbols. The very it sounds same incredible. I mean, that. it's it's a and, it's a drummer's album, yeah, but it's thanks. not. It's a. I mean, it's like a band. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a musician. It's yeah. It's just I would put it on and you know play it for my wife or for someone who's not a drummer and just they wouldn't. They wouldn't know it was just a drummer who's doing his awesome project. It would just comes off as a really great musical, you know, a band, a great Thank album. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I, I I wrote it for the yeah. average listener. You know, you can hear the drums sound incredible on that album. Not only did I hit them hard, but I've done that on every album. But the thing is that I'm the engineer, and I was involved with 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 the mixes although i wasn't at the mixing board I, yeah. I was doing it remotely but i had worked with jimmy t enough he knew how i wanted it to sound because he knew because i communicated what i was hearing so it wasn't like i want this and i want that and i don't like that sound and disagree with sure. this one. It wasn't about that opinion kind of a thing it was more like listen i'm the drummer I I create parts because of how they sound back there, and on uh, whatever records it doesn't sound like me. It doesn't feel like me. It doesn't have the nuances like me. It yeah. doesn't. It's not me because it's you know a bunch of other people in the in 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 the in in the line. And it, that's but that's how things work. That's why it never, you know, uh, nothing. I you know, it's just like yeah. I accepted it. No, and yeah, I didn't have to for my record, and I was like. I darn well I'm not going to. That's part of the reason I made it was to go, this yeah. is how I sound. No, it's a great mix of being a you know? monster drummer so, but also being listenable because even even as a mega drummer, I'm sure you don't want to you know be driving in your car every day. Listen, we, we don't all want to listen to drum solos all the time. <laughs> we want to listen to other stuff. I think you've, you've, you've been, a, you know this, yeah. but I think you've been a huge inspiration to many, 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 many people and uh, you're a lot of people's favorite drummer great. and I think... Um, it's just incredible. So, so before we wrap up, I got to say thank you to, uh, Thanks. Paul from, uh, drumming news network who I've, I've talked to Paul for the last year or so about different things, such a hardworking guy who really is just doing everything to kind of be in the drum community in a, in a really good way and spread the knowledge. And, uh, hmm. I just like that. Like there's not always a straight path of being a, you know, rock and roll drummer on TV. It's like sometimes like me, there's little right. side outlets you can go of just like talking about things and providing the knowledge. So thank you to Paul for connecting us. I think that's super cool. And I appreciate that. Yeah, so do I. And that's why he's uh, spearheading these masterclasses for me because he's connected to that. 
environment and he's vested in it and he's emotionally into it and he's knowledgeable he's got he's got everything yep. and then he works hard so you know that's that's that that so yes. so i am grateful as well mike as we wrap up here at the end one final question to kind of tie things back to the original conversation about gear and designing your monster drum kits what's really at the crux of uh your drum set like not, it's not even designing it it's just like it's you're in the middle of these monster setups small setups practice pad setups what's really the most important thing that brings it all together and kind of makes it mike mangini's drum set if that makes sense mm -hmm. um it's that i have found a way to be aware of that thing that is calling me it's magnet it's pulling me when i what i what i mean by that is you know um these thoughts and images that that come in when i'm in a in a focused place about about my instrument and, and my music so the thing is the drum kits the drum kits have developed to satisfy the music i'm hearing in my head sometimes it came from you know my being very young and just well, if I don't have this stuff, then I can't play like that yeah. guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, sometimes sure. it's as simple as that. And then with my de my development, it's a matter of, but I'm, I'm what about this and what about that? And then using the drum kits as a developmental tool, meaning, oh, I can't do this. I can't hit this. I can't even reach that. I don't even know what to do about this. But I set it up anyway. And so the drum kit becomes a learning and, and, and a, a development tool on my whole being. It's incredible to look through the, the, the years of your sets. And I know that there's a lot of, uh, you know, thought behind it. There's teams of people building it. There's painters. There's, there's a lot of, you know, the, the ergonomics. But from a guy sitting in the audience looking up, they're awesome. They're incredible. So good job for creating yeah. some, you know, iconic drum sets that people can just sit there and drool over and posters on the wall kind of stuff. You know, we, we got to have that in our industry. Yeah. And, uh, I, I guess it's part of the joy to, <laughs> to say how much fun I've had posting these videos from my pads, just a drum, just a yeah. one snare pad and a kick pad. It's, and I made music, making music out of it. There's plenty to do. And it's like, yeah, of course someone doesn't need all that but i want that because it's musical for me and i don't need anybody telling me that it's not needed and oh it can be done with three drums so and so does it with three, three drums well let so and so yes. go do it because it's not the same orchestrally it doesn't sound the same no. it doesn't have the same impact uh for certain kinds of music and on the opposite side of the fence on the opposite side of the fence yeah a larger kit has its okay. issues sure. at times. So you have to balance it. Like what what's just what's the music? What is the music demanding? It's not if any one's yeah. better necessarily than the other, but one does might and it might work better in some situations depending on the reason, you know, uh the premise. Like what's the point here? It's like, oh, that's why. Okay, well that's you have that yeah. drum set set up. And at the, and then at the end of the day, too. Let somebody do it. Why is does any, one person care how someone else <laughs> likes a drum set set up and, all, and then proposes to tell them that it's not right? It's just human nature. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Like, you, there's a, you it's, that's the internet era. Yeah, you, it's comments. And it's that's a very interesting point of it's just honestly, I think it gives people something. It's the Monday morning quarterback. It just gives people something to talk about. But once you hit a certain level... The well, top of the mountain whatever. is windy, as they say, or it's windier at the top of the mountain. Um, but so, yeah, 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 no, Mike, this is incredible, man. Yeah. I think we know about invisible signs. Um, the you can search Mangini and you'll find it. Um, there's an awesome um, Spotify playlist that's the Mike Mangini discography that has a ton of your stuff on there, which is super cool to listen through. Um, and I, mm -hmm. I recommend that as well. MikeMangini.com. You're on YouTube as well. A lot of great stuff on YouTube um social media I, my link tree goes to all this but the but the artist name for my album is man yes, it's Mangini. not mike Mangini. it's Mangini. you got your master classes you're looking forward to that uh i feel like you're always on the move i mean you're always doing something oh yeah you know what i have a another vimeo subscription um thing coming out and these things are 
incredibly affordable. I mean, it's like a practically given the stuff away for like the cost of a Starbucks coffee <laughs> a month, you know, one. Um, so I have one coming up that are playthroughs of Invisible Science, oh, they're cool. drum playthroughs. And I have something really special um, that's I'm still not finished. That's why I haven't put it out yet. But I have all different speeds so you can see it uh, in slow motion. Um, and then I'm, I'm, I have one version that I'm building now where I'm speaking, I'm doing a voiceover. So you know yeah. what I'm thinking and when I'm thinking it, which I, it's, it, this is the thing. It's like, that's what I do. Why haven't I ever thought to m- use it in, in, in a video yeah. in this context, not just voiceover, not voiceover. But it's Com- like, commentary. No, what's happening yeah. in the inner game. Yeah, but it's like it's 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 deep stuff, and uh, so that's that's going to be released very soon, and that's essentially in my master classes and in in my Vimeo videos, I go deep into it. I don't reveal all that with the social media posts. Social media posts for me have always just been about tying yeah. into people, keeping in touch, promoting things. You know, keep keeping it keeping it going, but it's it's not been about my giving away the farm. Yeah, no, uh, no way. That's 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 on the subscription services and and, and the classes and stuff. People are paying yep. good money for which that, which is good. Um, yeah, and rightly so. Well, rightly so. It's saving them ten years of time, yeah. five years yeah. of time. Why not? Um, I'll put a link you to know? all the dis- everything in the description for Mike's Mike's stuff, so you can check it out. And the uh, Mangini album, Invisible Signs, the master classes, yeah. everything there. So, Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you tonight, man. And and thank you very much for your time and coming on. And I hope that everyone come. If if Mike's coming to a town near you. Go out and check it out and uh, check out the album. So, Mr. Mike Mangini, thank you for being here. My pleasure.